got? We got our fresh blue crudo with ponzio sauce, scallion threads, and serranos, and our spicy sesame edamame. Hey, welcome to the sixth episode of Fire Island Catch and Cook. We have a beautiful 70 degree day here, a light wind coming out of the southeast. It's about two knots and it's 8.30 a.m. So it's a little bit later than I typically get started on, uh, on my, my fishing, but we're targeting fluke. So fluke fishing to me is very relaxing. We're gonna be drifting and jigging. I have, uh, I have my tackle here and this is from Chasing Tails Bait and Tackle. It's a high-low rig and it comes in this package with the white label on it. I like these rigs much better than other other places. I've gotten fluke rigs because they have these really they tie on these really sturdy uh, hooks that just seem to last quite longer than some of the other hooks. The other thing is that the shape is a little bit different. So some of the fluke rigs come with this funky shape hook on them that I just find more difficult to get out of the fluke's mouth. And uh, yeah, so I have the white here, and I also have a green rig set up on my other rod. And then I'm going to be using gulp on there. So I have multicolor. I bought a different, you know, couple of different uh, colors and threw them into one big container. So depending on what color the fluke are biting, I'm going to keep switching them up on the different high-low rigs and see what they're biting. I know a couple years ago the salmon was was the buzz. Everyone was buying the salmon-colored uh, gulp. Last year I caught a lot on green and yellow. So we're going to see what they're biting on today. Where'd you go? Um, so yeah, so I'll see everyone out at the fishing spot. We're heading east today, and uh, I have some time, so maybe we'll get on some other species as well. So see you out there. Fish on. I don't feel that flutter of a fluke though. Ah, huh, there's a fluke and it looks like a keeper. We got a 20 inch fluke here. Beautiful keeper size fluke. So I'm gonna get him right onto some ice water, but nice. Just changed up the fishing spot and he bought, he bit on the low green uh, gulp. Skunk is off. All right, so we got exactly what we came here for today. A beautiful 20 inch fluke. Legal limit is 18 and a half inches, so we did really well on that fish. I caught it in the Mauritius Bay area on that green gulp, so the citrus gulp is still hot. If you're a fan of gulp, keep throwing those yellows, greens, oranges. And uh, I thought it was gonna be a little bit hotter of a bite today. I got on that fish pretty early, and I fished around for a couple hours after catching, and there really wasn't anything else biting, but I feel lucky because everyone else around me wasn't catching, and the guys on the radio weren't catching, so we did really well. I'm gonna go back to the dock and fillet this up. It's a little bit different than some of the other fish we've caught so far in this season of FICC. And then I have a special treat. One of my very good friends from the chef is gonna come on and show us a delicious uh, recipe for fluke. And fluke is also one of my favorite fish to eat in Great South Bay. So if you guys are in for a treat, I'll see you back at the fillet table. Alright, 
So filleting fluke is a little bit different than how we've been filleting our striped bass, our weak fish, our blue fish, because they are a flat fish. You can see like this. Their eyes are actually on top. So we're gonna start with the white side up. And pretty much if you're looking here, you got, a, you got shoulder meat, you got the belly and stuff all over here. And so the meat kind of just goes like this. And we're gonna let the knife do most of the work for us. So I'm gonna grab a hold by the gills and I'm gonna just do a nice slow cut up in the shoulder. And then I'm gonna put the knife in and I'm just gonna slide down the back of the fish. I'm gonna come up, got a nice fillet on one side. I'm gonna flip it over. All right, and our second fillet. All right, welcome back to the FICC kitchen. I got my good friend here, Chef Steven Pechnik. Steve and I have been friends for a very long time. Steve's career started down in Miami at Q, and then he worked at various different restaurants and ended up in Little Spain and Hudson Yards, uh, opened up a restaurant in there. Now does private consulting, private home chef work, uh, you know, opens restaurants and things like that. Steve, I don't know if there's any other places you want to mention. Uh, also worked at One Hotels, Brooklyn Bridge, I Fury in the city as well. Uh, opened up our spot, Ronin Ramen, that we had going in Patchogue for a little bit. And that's, I think, what led us here. That's exactly what led us here. So as soon as I got on that fluke, I called up Steve. Steve makes this fluke crudo, which I'm going to let him take over the kitchen, explain the dish, explain what it does but I couldn't get it off my mind. And as soon as I got that, I called up Steve and I said, you need to come over and get in the FICC kitchen and show everyone how to, how to do this meal. So before we get into that, fluke crudo. You got crudo, you got ceviche, we know it's raw, something like that. What's the difference between ceviche and crudo? So the main difference between ceviches and crudos are a crudo is just a raw fish dish as where ceviche is actually cooked in the acidity from the lime that you use. And then that way it's actually not raw, it's considered uh, cooked and cured. Got it, so it's a difference in process. Yeah. And what are we eating with the crudo? All right, so along with the crudo, we're also gonna whip up a nice spicy edamame. It's quick, about four ingredients, super simple to do, easy for you to do at home as well. So I think that's a major part of what we're doing here. Cool, let's get right into All it. Right. All right, so before we get into starting the plate up of the dish, I'm gonna run you through the ponzu sauce, which goes with the fluke crudo. So it's gonna start off with some sake, some mirin, soy sauce, uh, yuzu juice. It's gonna have some garlic in it. We have bonito flakes, which are dried fish flakes, and then kombu. And then what both of those do, kombu is dried kelp, which is also salted. So what those do is they add a hint of smokiness and more umami flavor into the sauce. And that's what comes out when you let it steep together. And ponzu by nature is a citrus soy sauce. Um, so that's why we're going with yuzu. And then what we did to ours is we added some peaches in there as well. And that way it gives it another kick to it. I like to add grilled pineapple, anything like that. And it's like over the days it comes out like I said, it really steeps in the flavors and then those start to pop. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our sake and our mirror. We're gonna throw that direct onto high heat. Wait until that boils up. Then we're gonna ignite it. Be careful if you're doing this at home because you will see when we flambe it, the flame's gonna go pretty high. So you wanna step back a little bit. Don't wanna singe any arm hairs, anything like that. So now, while we're waiting for the sake and the mirin to come up to a boil, we're gonna start with some of our garnishes. So get all of our mise en place ready for the crudo. I'm gonna start by making some scallion threads. It's very simple. You're gonna want a really sharp knife. And what you're gonna need as well is a nice ice bath. And you'll see, once you add it in there, you're gonna kind of toss it up in the ice bath and it's gonna help the scallions really curl up. 
and it's visually appealing and it's also just adds that other depth of dimension to your dish. So you're gonna wanna cut your scallions into nice thin strands. And this is gonna go right into our ice bath. Now we got a serrano, which is also going to be another garnish to add another depth into the dish, a little heat element in there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to slice this nice and thin. Kevin is also constantly needed to be reminded to tuck his fingers in. So what you want to do is you want to make that nice claw and that way you can work on your knuckle as a little bit of a buffer and that way you're not gonna really cut into your finger, just the food. We're also gonna throw together a little spicy edamame to go along with the flu crudo. So we got edamame, you can get it at most grocery stores, check in the frozen food aisle, look for shelled. You could get unshelled already as, if you'd like as well. We got sesame seeds, sesame oil, some sambal olek, which is pretty standard in most households if you like to cook, if you don't, it's a garlic chili paste, super shelf stable. It's right here, very common looking. See it all over the place, great stuff. A lot of flavor and they do a lot of the work for you. So it makes it a quick and easy pickup. And we're also gonna finish it with a little bit of Malden flake salt. Gives it that nice crunch without it having too much of a bite through a big chunk of salt. All right, so we're gonna take it over here and then I'm gonna show you guys what's next. So we're gonna take our edamame, we're gonna blanch it. You only really wanna go, if it's coming straight from frozen, ours was thawed a little bit, you're gonna put it in boiling water about three, four minutes. You don't wanna go too long or it'll start to burn and it'll also get a little mushy. I like mine to still have a little bit of bite to it. So ours were a little thawed out already, so it's gonna go about a minute and a half, two minutes more on that side. So now that the edamame has been cooking, another good telltale sign, if you don't have a timer or don't feel like setting it, the edamame, a lot like raviolis, will start to flow to the top once they're about getting there, nice and ready. So we're just gonna take this, strain it out. Hold our edamame for a second. You're gonna want a ripping hot pan. This is gonna be our sesame oil. You can throw your sesame seeds right into the oil. I'd use about half a tablespoon of the sambal. If you like it spicy, go full. If you're a little less reserved on it, or a little more reserved rather, then I would just hit it with just the tip of a teaspoon. You're gonna wanna hear that sizzle. And you're just tossing it to give it a nice even coat. All right, now that I've got our edamame all coated, You're gonna to wanna to try to stack it. A little bit of height to every plate. You eat with your eyes first, so it gives a little more depth with the dish. We're just gonna finish it with some of that flake sea salt that I was telling you about to give it a nice crunch and texture. And that's it. We're gonna start jumping back into our ponzu sauce. So what we have going into there is we're gonna have some garlic and you're simply just gonna smash the garlic to open it up. Like I said, we have our kombu, which is our dried kelp, bonito flakes, which are our dried and smoked fish flakes. We're going to have a little bit of yuzu juice. Soy sauce. And I would say you want to use equal parts soy sauce to what you did with the sake and mirin. So now that the sake and mirin's uh, heated up, we're gonna flambe it, which is basically light it on fire and burn off all the alcohol. All right, so right now you can't see the flame because we're outside, but inside in your home, you wanna be careful when you ignite this. You don't wanna be too close, put your face over the pot, anything like that. You're just gonna wait for the flame to die down and then you know all the alcohol is cooked off. Once that's happened, we're just gonna take this Pour it over the rest of our ingredients. All right, so I didn't let all the fire burn off, but this is your kombu, 
your garlic, your bonito flakes, the sake, the mirin, the yuzu juice, and you're gonna let this steep for, you'll see the flavors really come together overnight. You can taste it right now. It's good, tomorrow will be great. Day two, day three, even better. And then after you do that, you're gonna wanna strain all this out, push it down with like, you could use one of these, this is good enough, a nice fine strainer. And you're gonna really wanna push down on all that because it has all that flavor and it's gonna be concentrated, caught in the kombu, everything like that. So then once everything's strained, you're gonna be able to put it into a squeeze bottle, you can put it into an empty soy sauce bottle, anything you have. And once you've strained everything, it's pretty shelf stable and you can hold on to that for as long as you'd like, as long as it's refrigerated. I have this pre-prepared ponzu. It's already been steeping for three days at my house and we're ready to rock. This is a fluke that Kevin caught the other day. We've got our scallion threads, which you can see started to curl now in the ice water. Our thin sliced serranos, our ponzu. And again, we're gonna finish with a little bit of Malden salt. That's the uh, flaked sea salt. So here we go, I cleaned up a nicer piece of the fluke and you're gonna wanna, when you're taking a cut, you could either go two ways about it. This is a decent sized fluke. They do get much bigger and sometimes you will be using a much thicker fish. So you could either cut straight down like that. But for this, we want some nice uh, bites, bite sized presentation pieces. So we're gonna slice on a nice bias going this way on the fish, but also tilting our knife on the bias. So we're just gonna go through and you wanna take your cuts and you wanna use the whole length of your blade as you do it. So it's gonna be one fluid motion starting at the back, ending at the nose. And you can see I dragged through and there we go. A nice beautiful cut of fish. And we're just gonna keep going through like that. Kevin's got these amazing bowls. They're made by Samantha Clay. They're incredible, right from Brooklyn. Nothing better than supporting local. So here, we're gonna take our fish and we're gonna start placing it on the plate. And again, you eat with your eyes first, so you want movement around the plate. And these are pretty flat pieces of fish, so we're just gonna stagger them, that way you get a little more out of the plate. Now, our ponzu sauce. I like to individually dress each piece of fish so it gets a little quick marinade. Take a nice serrano, place it on each piece of fish, again for that heat element in the dish. Then we're back over to our scallion threads. And again, what this is gonna do, it's gonna add some height and some freshness to the dish as well. It's gonna add that nice little crunch. All right, so I got us some chopsticks. Steve, what do we got? We got our fresh blue crudo with ponzu sauce, scallion threads, and serranos, and our spicy sesame edamame. Wow. Let's dive into it. I recommend chopsticks on the blue crudo, and then just use your hands for the edamame. All right, let's dig in. It's been a while since I've had this dish, so. What do you think? Big flavor profile here. This is such a simple dish, but you got that um, and immediately the heat from the pepper that hits my hits my tongue. The fish is light. It's delicious. Fluke is some of the best eating in the Great South Bay. I said that in the other part of my video. The scallion and that sauce. Walk me through that. I'm tasting a lot of different flavors. So in there, you got a lot going on. That's probably the most complex thing to the dish right now. So you're getting a lot of umami flavors from the kombu, a bit of smokiness from those bonito flakes. Then you also have the mirin and sake, you give it that little dry flavor to it and sweetness. The soy sauce balances it out again, and it's got our recipe, the one I made, had a little bit of peach in there as well. I'm gonna say. So it adds that slight fruitiness. So like I was saying, a big favorite of mine is also do pineapple. That really 
takes off and it's perfect for the summer, you know? The sweetness, the spice, the lightness, and then that umami in the back of my mouth. This is, this is for the books. You killed this. You absolutely killed this dish. Like I said, easy recipe. The sauce itself, the most complex part, but we could throw together a recipe for you guys. That way, if you're interested in making this at home, you got it. The thing I like about this edamame too, it's got a smoky flavor to it. Oh, I don't yeah. know if that's from the seasoned- Sesame oil. The sesame oil. So, so the sesame, it's a toasted sesame oil. It adds a lot of flavor to it. The sesame seeds, we also bloom in that sesame oil, so it brings out more of that flavor. And again, four ingredients to this dish, super flavorful. It's it's something you'd see at every restaurant, you know? This packs a mean punch though. I'm used to going to your local sushi place where they're throwing ao and, and chili sauce for a, a spicy uh, edamame. This is much more complex than that. That toasted uh, sesame seed with the heat. It's absolutely delicious. And again, you could put as much or as little of the heat with the sambal as you want. If you want to do it straight up, you could use sesame. If you have a sesame allergy, pull those sesame seeds and the sesame oil out. Use regular olive oil, or I would use a, a blended oil because it has a higher smoking point. We're going to continue to eat the rest of this dish. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe for future content. Steve, thank you so much for coming on here. You absolutely Anytime, crushed this dish, and I hope everybody at home enjoys it. Enjoy, guys.